Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. I'm gonna to try to knock out a quick project uh, before I have to head out in a little while for a soccer game, uh, kids soccer game. We're gonna make a bow staff. My son is 10 and he does martial arts and at one of the levels, the weapon is a bow staff. Uh, this one came from uh, his karate place that he does it at. Uh, they let me have this one. I asked him if I could borrow one as a template and they said, well, he could just have that one. I was extremely grateful, really appreciated that. I would love to return the favor uh, with in the form of two bow staffs. And I wanna see if I can make one of these with simple hand tools and, uh, and give them back and donate them to the dojo. The, uh, this bow staff is made from pine, pretty much, and uh, it's probably not great for contact, but they don't do that. They don't spar with these at his level. Most of it is form, and this is gonna be for a 10-year-old, so it's not gonna be the same size as you might have for an adult. It's uh, flat, it's consistent here in the middle, um, but at some point it begins a taper and the ends are gonna be a smaller diameter. It's got a gradual taper to a much smaller diameter and that's taking weight off the two ends. I'm no expert at any of this stuff, but I assume that's so that for them when they're doing the form, uh, it's easier, it doesn't have as much weight out there. Uh, so we're gonna see if we can match this taper and see if we can produce a few of these. Let's talk first about tools, uh, the hand tools that I'm gonna to use to do this. Now I thought that this project was gonna require a draw knife. Uh, I started shopping around for draw knives, but uh, for a draw knife, but turned out my dad had one. Now this is a pretty old one, and it actually has, uh, it looks hammered, uh, as if somebody made it from hand. So it has some imperfections in it. Uh, it's very old, but it's also very hard. Uh, when I started to sharpen this, I took a file to it, and, uh, and it really didn't, uh, it's very hard steel. Uh, but I did get it polished up, kind of reconditioned a little bit, uh, and a very sharp edge on it, and I thought, this is perfect. It's time for us to do our uh, bow staff project. Uh, but this actually wasn't the best tool for doing it. I started with that, uh, but it was difficult to not take out too much material. I think that's great for taking off bark or taking off large amounts of material. Uh, but for this, I need very symmetrical tapers. I really wanted it to be even. Uh, and so for that, I need to control how much material I take off in each stroke of this. And I, the tool that I found to do this better is a block plane. Uh, I, have a, I have quite a few of these. I pick them up from yard sales or any time that I ever come across one. And I've had a few of them given to me when people are just cleaning out their garages and they say, you look like someone that could use this. Um, and I certainly am. And I'm very thankful for that. I've sharpened this one up. Uh, I learned to do that. I wanted to do more hand tool work. Uh, to do that, you need to understand how to sharpen these and how to at least set them up a little bit. Uh, but it works out really well because it takes off a very controlled amount of material with, with each pass. And so that allows me to uh, count how many passes I make, uh, rotate the, the dowel and make the same amount of passes. So I'm taking off approximately the same amount of material uh, all the way around the, the diameter of the stock. Let's talk next about the, the stock itself. Uh, I purchased this from the big box store. Uh, it is a one inch dowel. I believe it was about six feet long when we started and we trimmed this down to about 53 and a half inches is what the original one was. Uh, it's a pine, it's just a pine dowel and uh, you'll spend a good while, make sure you go through the entire uh, stack of it as with most lumber or material there, you'd have to go through the whole pile of it just to find two good ones. So I went ahead and did that. Um, and I've actually already made one of these so that I could tell you how not to do it. Uh, so this is kind of our first pass at it. Uh, I've got this one pretty well done. It's sanded and, and pretty smooth and it's almost ready for finishing. Uh, but we're gonna do the second one here, uh, which is why I started filming. The first thing I need to do is figure out where does the taper start? I have had no idea and it's very gradual, it's very difficult to see it uh, with my eye. And the way that I did that is by putting it on the tabletop itself and rocking and pushing the two sides of it until I could figure out what part of it never never changed. So you could there be gaps on two sides and as you kind of you know rock the, the stick you'll see those closing up and then eventually you get to a part and it's always making contact. And that's that's our fulcrum, that's where that taper begins. Uh, so I was able to kind of figure out where that was at 
It's actually 16 and three quarter inches back on our uh, stock. So we go out to the end, measure back 16 and three quarter inches and make a mark on our dowel. And then I tried to kind of carry that, that mark all the way around the uh, dowel itself. So I knew where that was. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide this into quarters. Uh, so kind of the easiest thing is just to sort of eyeball uh, about the middle there and then split those in half as well. And that should come out uh, to kind of about e even-ish spacing. It doesn't have to be perfect or exact or anything like that because all we're gonna do is take these off anyways. Uh, but, it's, but this is kind of that second step so that I could remove material from this first segment. Uh, I would make passes and start bringing it down. And then I would come back and I'd start the pass all the way at the back and work it all the way to the end. So now I'm double uh, removing material from here and then I just keep working back. So maybe five passes on this part, you know, five or 10 passes on this part, 10 passes on this part. So each time it's taking away the next set of material, but also now uh, removing additional uh, material from the segments that I already did. And so in doing that, I'm able to remove here remove this and this, remove this and this and this, until eventually I get back to our original where our, uh, our taper begins and taking full long strokes all the way out the end. Uh, the way that I'm gonna do that is taking it off in quarters, uh, works really well. So take, uh, put it in the vise, work down the top part of it, and then rotate it 90 degrees and take it off again. Uh, and that kind of gives you four even sides uh, then what you can do is come back in the middle part of that and take out that kind of that quarter material, but you're working back to the ones that you already established uh, as far as your, your taper. So now you're kind of just uh, putting the plane on there and trying to match it so that that next part uh, is going to be even as well. So you rotate 90 degrees, you kind of hit the, uh, what would it be, 12, uh, 3, 6, and 9. And then you kind of double back and then you, you hit the spaces in between that and with the same method. And by then you kind of have an oddly shaped thing. Uh, you can just trim out or clean up the, the, the edges there. All right, so we've got our block plane. Let's see here. All right, so we've got our block plane. And the way we're going to take material off is we're going to take it off of this top section first. Uh, then we'll take it off of the, we'll rotate it to 90, and we'll take it off the next side. Uh, just use a bench vise or uh, anything like that to take this off. And we're going to try to hold this flat against the top like this. And you'll see it'll start taking off. Remember, the block plane is going to have a, a shoe or a sole, I think it's a sole, <clears throat> to it. So it may not grab everything evenly because if this has a bow in it or something like that uh, or has a, a point, it's going to take more material there. So we made five passes here and we'll scoot back and now we'll make these passes again. Uh, and now it will include and take this bit too. So now we have kind of an edge here. This will start to take that edge and then it'll take this away as well. And then we just work our way all the way back.
Now that we have something to work towards on the end, we can just round this out. We just keep taking these, these corners, these hard corners off, uh, and just kind of ease it back to where it's, uh, so it makes it round. And you only have to get it kind of close uh, because you're gonna take sandpaper to it and that'll, that's a great way to round it out. And uh, that's that's pretty close. You can see I'm a little bit off, um, but we might clean a bunch of that up with sandpaper and you'll see it still has some edges. Uh, so I'll probably just do a little bit of touch up, but it's it's pretty close. And you can see how it's got kind of a taper. It goes from one inch all the way down to that, which I would guess is probably, yeah, it's, it's about three quarters of an inch. Uh, so I may take it down just a, more, a little bit more, maybe down to like five eighths. I think that's what the original one, I think the original one's about five eighths uh, down to this bottom. Let's see. Oh, it's a half inch. So I got a bit more to take out, uh, but I can start, uh, that's nice, cause I'm a little bit big. So I could, I could work this down and I still have more material to be able to move, remove until I get down to about a five eighths um, on this end. So I'll kind of keep at it. And, uh, but that's it. That's pretty much the process. Everything else from here on out is sanding. I just get some heavy grit sandpaper and it'll help take out any of the plain uh, edges where it kind of leaves a little bit of a flattened or squared edge. Uh, that'll The sandpaper will take that away. Uh, when you're all done, you'll wind up with uh, something that's tapered and it looks a lot more like that. All right, well, hopefully uh, you found this helpful or entertaining uh, either way, um, but uh, that's making a bow staff with a block plane. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I uh, look forward to seeing you again on the next one.